Hello and a very warm welcome to the first of our new WireSwarm webinar series. During this series, we will share the knowledge and insights you will need to prepare for the unstoppable market shift to digital and crypto assets. This shift offers fantastic revenue creation opportunities, as well as the potential to revolutionize and rejuvenate traditional banking business models, as we will show. Our primary goal is to give you the tools and confidence to capture the strategic opportunities that are unfolding in front of us. We want to help you recognize the very fortunate position you and your bank have as existing trusted advisors with strong brand values which will allow you to position your organization for success now and in the future. This webinar series will guide you on this accelerating journey and I'm sure you're now eager to get down to business. First, let's have a look at what we are going to cover in today's webinar. We will cover the development of this exciting new space from the emergence of cryptocurrencies, the evolution of tokenization and the growth of the exchanges that are creating a secondary market for digital and crypto assets. We'll then look at the advantages tokenized securities have to offer to banks like yours, as well as examining the potential and role of decentralized finance in that mix. Finally, we will take a peep into the future and the impact tokenization will have on the world. How it will make pretty much every asset bankable, together with a bold outlook from one of the leading players in the emerging space. Sounds good so far, right? But what's really in it for you? Why should you watch this webinar? Well, by the end of this first episode, you will have a good overview and understanding of the potential of security and asset tokenization how that potential is already being turned into reality and most importantly, how you and your organization can position yourselves at the forefront of this exciting new world of opportunity. It's a win-win. So if you're ready, let's get on the way. Let's start with some numbers. The daily trading volume for Bitcoin has grown from 5 million US dollars back in 2013 to 450 million US dollars in 2019 after peaking one year earlier at 650 million USD a day. That is quite a growth curve. And the digital asset market is maturing fast. By 2027, it is estimated that 24 trillion worth of bankable assets will be tokenized. And that is only the tip of the iceberg. In fact, we are very much looking at a fully tokenized future. Since Bitcoin was invented in 2009, over 6,000 crypto and digital assets have emerged and are now competing hard for market share by innovating new business models, introducing new payment and finance solutions, or by creating entirely new secondary markets. We expect this trend to spill over to traditional asset classes sooner than later. Why? Because the process of tokenization will allow assets like stocks, or bonds to be issued and traded more efficiently, as we will see. It also creates new global markets for assets that have so far been unbankable due to restrictions in liquidity, geographical accessibility or excessive transaction costs that made their securitization economically unfeasible. As a result, we believe that in the not too distant future, any kind of asset can and will be traded and settled on distributed ledgers. And there is more. We also believe that pretty much any kind of ownership or voting right, as well as any kind of tangible and intangible value, can and will eventually be tokenized and made globally tradable, provided that demand makes it happen. Security tokens are one of the most talked about digital assets since the end of the ICO craze of 2017. In essence, the term was coined when crypto startups emerged and attempted to tokenize tangible and intangible financial assets such as traditional securities and commodities. When we talk about security tokens, we typically refer to fungible and negotiable financial instruments that incorporate some type of monetary value and ownership or voting right. Typically fall into one of the following four categories. One, potential dividend generating equity such as stock. Two, debt such as bonds or other liabilities, three, funds where investors own shares of a collective investment scheme, or four, hard assets such as commodities, real estate, gemstones, art, 
cars or even cattle. The list is almost endless and we will look at the last category in more detail a little bit later. So how does the process of tokenization of these assets work? Well, simply put, it involves digitizing the ownership of a security and any rights that come with it. This is achieved through the issuance of a cryptographic token registered on a distributed ledger technology infrastructure, or generally referred to as blockchain. Unlike cryptocurrencies, utility or infrastructure tokens, which do not typically embody ownership rights to regulated financial securities, it's generally accepted that security tokens must comply with existing securities laws. And financial regulatory requirements must also be adhered to in order for them to be issued and traded on secondary markets. Today, there are probably in excess of 100 tokenized securities on the market which have been issued in a regulatory compliant way, and potentially many more that have been issued in a non-compliant way. Most of them are still waiting for the first licensed secondary markets to admit them to trading. As a result, most security token trading is restricted to OTC transactions via the brokering issuer. And this will likely remain the case until established liquidity venues create scalable secondary marketplaces. In addition to the slow pace of regulatory acceptance, market adoption has also been impacted by the fact that security tokens need traditional securities exchanges and banks to upgrade their core infrastructures. This would allow them to support things like on-chain trade settlement, custody, and ensuring that token ownership can be seamlessly traced along the entire trading value chain. We talk and collaborate with many leading liquidity venues as well as banking, custody and settlement solution providers. What we hear is that these infrastructure upgrades are well on their way and it is just a matter of time before tokenized securities can become the global norm. And that is not surprising, as the trading of derivatives, commodities, stocks and bonds are already being ported onto permissioned ledgers within several large bank consortia led by major global banks. The emergence of competing liquidity venues such as the Swiss Six Digital Exchange, the German Börse Stuttgart, T0 in the USA or the Fusang Exchange for the Asia-Pacific market are further evidence that security token trading on professional secondary markets is developing relatively fast. Admittedly, these venues do not yet handle very large trading volumes, but we are seeing numerous banks and consortia of financial institutions investing heavily in research and development around DLT-based bonds, credit ladders, private equity issuances, as well as the creation of new interbank payment networks. These projects will likely also help push trading volumes on the security token exchanges in the near future. On top of that, various central banks have announced their intention to introduce so-called central bank issued cryptocurrencies or CBDCs. These are not like cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and typically do not bear any of the typical crypto characteristics such as disinflationary design or being based on permissionless ledgers. CBDCs are in fact just like regular fiat money. They will be governed centrally and their supply can be influenced by a central bank's monopolistic decision on monetary policy. While we obviously can only estimate the size of the future digital asset market driven by security tokenization, we can tell you about the consensus among our industry peers. This is that any traditional security or financial asset and any corresponding ownership or governance right it entails can and will eventually be tokenized and exchanged on a DLT-based trading infrastructure. The reason for this bold statement is based on the fact that more people will become familiar with the many significant benefits tokenized securities have to offer. Here is a selection of these advantages. The first one I'd like to mention is fractional ownership. This refers to the divisibility of an asset and its ownership. It is particularly helpful because it helps, for example, an investor to acquire partial ownership of a building without having to invest in a special purpose vehicle such as a real estate investment trust. This prevents the corresponding exposure to all other assets under management in said trust. 
Second is improved settlement speed, since blockchain-based transactions and ownership transfers settle in a matter of minutes rather than days. Third, are reduced security issuance costs, which allow ownership claims and cap tables to be automatically reconciled in real time and hardwired by code. This also eliminates the risk of human error provided the smart contract it uses is well designed. Next is potential 24-7 market access, since tokenized securities can be automatically traded on-chain with no restrictions to market open or market close. Whether this will be adopted by regulated exchange venues remains to be seen, however. Further, we are looking at improved accountability and security. All ownership transfers are stored on a decentralized immutable ledger without a single point of attack. This reduces the risk for bookkeeping errors and would make them easily traceable. Migrating a shareholder registry to a public ledger also reduces transaction costs through the automated tracking of asset ownership changes. At the same time, it can create immutable audit trails that improve overall accountability through authentication links to verified digital identities of natural and legal persons which are stored off-chain. In addition, we should also consider a reduced liquidity premium, which means that better liquidity and market depth will lower transaction costs when transferring private low-liquidity assets such as venture capital or private equity before maturity. For instance, tokenization would allow venture capital to remain locked in without locking in the investors. Similarly, tokenized funds would allow fund managers to invest in illiquid assets without risking redemptions. Increased market capitalization is another one. This particularly benefits assets that suffer from illiquidity due to high unit transaction costs as they become globally accessible to much broader market thanks to their divisibility and fractionalization. Next we have automated compliance. This refers to the concept that regulatory ramifications are directly and immutably coded into the architecture of the smart contract responsible for the issuance of a tokenized asset. As a result, regulatory limitations in terms of where an asset can be traded or by whom no longer have to be enforced by exchange venues. Instead, the asset can simply not be traded in jurisdictions or between counterparties which are not deemed regulatory compliant. Exchange interoperability will also be one of the main enablers of large-scale asset tokenization. Asset trading could converge towards merged marketplaces between licensed centralized exchanges and decentralized trading infrastructures that use encoded regulatory compliance. Last but not least, we should mention digital bartering as one of the key advantages of tokenized securities. We are already seeing certain companies who are creating DLT architectures that will allow for different types of assets, asset values and amounts to be represented by and transferred between non-fungible tokens that are based on the same underlying blockchain infrastructure. Such a token design has a massive potential as it can overcome the current limitations of fungible tokens which can only represent one standardized unit of value of a single asset or asset basket, as well as the limitations of non-fungible tokens which represent a specific non-interchangeable value. As you can see, the advantages of security tokens are plentiful, and when we talk about security token use cases, the list would become even more extensive. Mentioning them all here would go well beyond the scope of this webinar episode. However, for those who are interested, the World Economic Forum in 2019 issued a comprehensive paper called The Future of Financial Infrastructure, detailing a range of use cases greatly contextualizing security tokenization by showing a wide range of TLT and smart contract based applications as well as their implications for financial institutions. The highlighted use cases include global payment solutions, syndicated loans, trade finance, proxy voting and many many more. To touch on a slightly different subject, let's have a brief look at another nascent yet rapidly growing set of use cases that are emerging in the crypto space. 
DeFi or decentralized finance. At its core, DeFi describes an ecosystem of applications that replace intermediary third parties with self-executing smart contracts to offer trust and permissionless financial services. In essence, the goal of DeFi is to decentralize and automate the execution of core financial service workflows involved in trading and investing, liquidity provision, asset management, lending and borrowing, escrow and even market making. Some of these use cases have recently experienced an explosive growth in popularity and market capitalizations in the crypto space, but they are yet to prove their sustainability. Because if one of these aforementioned use cases is not managed by a trusted third party that can be held accountable if the service is malfunctioning, every service participant must rely on the smart contract to work properly. This creates a significant technological risk for all involved parties, which can only be reduced by the time the service is running flawlessly, similarly to the Bitcoin protocol. Apart from the tokenization of traditional and bankable securities, DLTs and smart contracts have also cleared the path for the securitization of non-bankable assets such as luxury goods, art, precious stones, livestock and even fan engagement. Particularly for assets that are not yet bankable due to limited accessibility and liquidity, we thus expect tokenization to spur the growth of entire new markets as they suddenly become available to an international investor base through this new global tokenized trading floor. One good example here would be small to mid-sized Swiss enterprises, which make up 95% of the Swiss economy. These firms will eventually be able to raise capital at a low cost from a global investor pool which, in turn, can experience an almost frictionless investment experience to get exposure to local Swiss SMEs from all over the world. To conclude this first webinar in the Wireswarm series and to give you some additional food for thought, we would like to give a bold outlook on the future of global asset trading. Everyone with access to the internet will be able to hold and trade stocks, cryptocurrencies, debt securities, fractionalized real estate, gemstones, part of a cow, and even voting rights on their favorite soccer club's decision from a single hardware wallet which is connected to multiple custody providers across the globe. That is why we developed Wireswarm, the leading institutional order and execution management system for digital and crypto asset trading for banks. Wireswarm seamlessly connects your bank to the fractionalized crypto and digital asset space through a single fixed connection to the world's most liquid and regulated brokers exchanges, OTC desks and market makers. This out-of-the-box connectivity is paired with best-in-class execution capabilities such as requests for quote, execution algos and smart order routing. Hence, enabling your bank to ensure best execution to the clients of tomorrow, which will turn to your financial institution for their cryptocurrency and digital asset trading activities. If you are interested in learning more about AlgoTrader and Wireswarm, why not visit our website at wireswarm.net or better still, contact us directly to see how we can help you and your bank capture the opportunities offered by crypto and digital assets. I look forward to hearing from you. Anyway, that's it for this first episode. The Wireswarm team would like to thank you for signing up and for taking the time to listen and watch. We sincerely hope that you have found this first webinar of real value and we look forward to welcoming you and your colleagues to the next episode in this series, where we will provide a comprehensive overview of the business use cases that digital assets and cryptocurrencies can offer to your bank and why these concepts will play an integral part of your bank's long-term digitization strategy. Further down the road, we will also show you the serious technical challenges you will have to prepare for if you decide to establish trading connectivity to this market on your own.